It's November 2020. Thought I'd give an update on things here on the inside of this geothermal greenhouse, which we began building last summer, 2019. One of the uh, first things that you would notice if you've watched prior videos is that we have removed most of the tomatoes. This south window was covered in tomatoes. We also removed squash and melons. Wasn't so much because it was getting cold, the tomatoes were still producing, believe it or not. But uh, we had a white fly problem. And the only way to really get after the white flies is to spray everything, top and bottoms of leaves. And the tomatoes were just infested with white flies. We couldn't really appropriately spray with those giant tomato plants. Some of them were literally 15 feet long. So we had uh, we had them on strings down here where we had them trellised up the ceiling. And then we'd drop them off the ends of these strings, tomatoes everywhere. But uh, we elected to remove the tomatoes. We also took everything out of the aquaponics so that we could really effectively spray for the white flies. We did that about three weeks ago and uh, there are not, uh, not many white flies left. We still see them here and there, but I think about 95% of them are gone. Uh, one thing we've been able to do with the uh, tomatoes removed is we've been able to come back in and remove a lot of the really crummy soil and replace it with, uh, we get some black soil from a neighboring farm, put some mulch in as we're uh, mulching leaves and branches this fall at our house. So we've been able to kind of continually improve our soil here in the greenhouse little by little, get rid of that terrible clay soil that we have had, or at least that we started with. Here's the passion fruit. And uh, you can see it kind of bunched up in the middle. We finally finished our project of adding hog panels from the ceiling all the way to the floor. We're gonna grow on these hog panels, whether it's dragon fruit or passion fruit or squash or grapes. We're gonna use the ceiling in this greenhouse to grow things. Passion fruit just continues growing. It's doing well. Dragon fruit as well. Try to get out of the sun. Dragon fruit was getting uh, overtaken by the tomatoes. Now that the tomatoes are gone, you can really see them taking off here along the ceiling. And we'll continue to trellis them along the ceiling right where we want them. These have been in the sun the whole time. On the north side, uh, where the north wall is out of the sun during the summer, they really struggled. You can see how thin they are. But uh, as the full sun has returned and we're in the sun right now, you can see the new growth is really healthy. Bananas, we started with two tiny little banana, like six to eight inch, um, it was a dwarf Cavendish. And because as they grow, they throw off pups, they are just everywhere. We've got them in pots all around the greenhouse, but growing well, good and healthy. This is just our little banana clump right here. Eureka lemon is throwing a lot of fruit. That's a Myers lemon. Another banana, they're everywhere. One thing I'd show you is this fig tree, which is a good eight and a half, nine feet tall. It's had fruit on it all summer long. We're now, of course, in fall. We purchased this last year, and when we purchased this, we purchased actually two of them. This little guy right here. Um, that one over there was actually in our yard from a couple years ago. We decided to take all the figs out of the yard because we're in a zone 6B and even though the nursery said they'd grow, they just barely survived the winter. So this is a Chicago Hardy variety. We purchased this last year at the same time that we purchased this. Only difference is this guy was planted in the greenhouse and the other was planted in our yard. So I certainly don't recommend a fig 
tree in a zone 6B. So we decided to take the figs that we had planted in our yard, bring them over here to the greenhouse where they can thrive. And similarly, this is our pomegranate. When we purchased this pomegranate, it's a Utah sweet pomegranate variety. We purchased two, purchased this at the same time. Put this one in our yard, put this one in the greenhouse. And uh, I have no idea how this made it through the winter. It leafed up this past summer, which surprised me. I thought it was dead. And here heading into fall, we lose leaves on everything. So uh, we elected to bring this over to the greenhouse, put it in a pot, get it through the winter, and then we'll probably take it down to the orchard in Arizona. But you can see the difference growing in the greenhouse, same pomegranate, same variety, same time, as trying to put a pomegranate in a zone six. We've got these in a zone eight down in Arizona. They seem to do really well. They do very well in the greenhouse. This is our little lime tree. I didn't expect fruit on it so soon, but it's got uh, lots of limes on it. This is kind of interesting. This is a uh, small mango tree, and we just put it in a pot while we figure out where we want to put it. And somehow by the luck of nature, we have a tomato plant. Somehow a seed got in that pot and uh, we'll, we'll uh, keep this tomato plant going as long as it wants to go, move it over to the one of the grow beds, but with the luck of nature. This is a tangelo, which is a citrus variety. Recently brought it in from Florida. It is eight feet tall. We have 10 different citrus varieties. This is a blood orange, very small. We left one orange on it. Star fruit. We haven't decided where to put this yet, so it's still on a pot. Show you something interesting. We decided to leave this tomato plant in here. It had uh, very little growth uh, with no sun during the summer, but now that the sun is on it, this is the same plant. We've got fruit growing all over. I have no idea how it's gonna go because we don't grow tomatoes this late in the year, but we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun and just continue watching this, again, the same tomato plant. This is a new persimmon tree that we brought in. Guava. White flies love guava leaves, but uh, this thing has grown well. We've had to remove a number of leaves just as they've been nesting on the bottom side of the leaves, but now they're largely eradicated. There's still a few here and there, and, and white flies love guavas and they love tomato plants. Then I mentioned I removed everything from the uh, aquaponics literally cleared it out so that we could effectively spray for the white flies. When we removed everything, I decided because I loved the roots underneath some of these, um, that's a parsley, some of the herbs that uh, we just left the roots in the bottom of that pot. And in two, three weeks, look how it has just grown back. I'll show you what I'm talking about on the roots. So we left the old root system and the parsley has grown back, kind of fun. So that's just a quick tour. I haven't covered everything, just kind of the things that jump out at me. It's another fig that we brought over from the house. A couple bananas that we've potted. Pineapple, I'll show you. This is a pineapple we planted in the spring. These are new pineapples. This is what they look like when they arrive. And that's about, um, oh, maybe five, six months growth. Artichokes were choking behind tomatoes. They've now come out and they're doing much better. That's just a quick tree and plant tour. We have winterized the greenhouse, prepped it for cold weather. I'll do a separate video and show you how we prep this greenhouse, which is a geothermal greenhouse for cold weather so that we can continue to operate and grow things during the winter. 
I'll do that maybe next week. So that's it for now.